Hello everyone, how are we? One in the chat if you can hear me. Happy Monday. We're in the Monday mood. This picture right here is the Monday mood. <laughs> Free as a bird and happy. Ah, lovely, you can hear me. Just give me one moment to step away from my computer for a sec because I forgot to close the window and it is cold here in London. So one second, my lovelies. All righty, so let's see who is here on this fine, fine Monday. Let's just scroll all the way back up. <laughs> You're coming in thick and fast today. Ah, so we've got Polena, hi hey Sylvia, Carol, Elaine, hi everyone from the UK, Latoya, fancy, fancy. Hello, Emma, Kay Castillo, Black Queen. Yes, the dancing is back. <laughs> Church Nelly, hello. Catherine Bird. Arizan. Emma, Beverly Hardy. Hi, Lydia. Yes, we're in the Monday mood. I'm in a very good mood today because I've spent the whole day clearing out my messy room. It's finally looking like a room that a grown adult female occupies. <laughs> Not the absolute mess it's been looking the last week, but I've been very busy with the project and you know what it's like. Sometimes you kind of let yourself go and you have to beat yourself over the head and be like, okay, get it together. So I spent the whole day literally, I put aside all of my um, actual work today um, and just said, you know what? I just have to, have to do a thorough clean because I didn't have time over the weekend. But it's looking, it's looking like a boudoir now. Uh, <laughs> you need Duchess Megan. Okay, I'll put a picture of Megan. Uh, let's see what I have. Um, there you go. Megan with that smile we love. Hello, cookies and cream, Ethan's husband. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, early spring cleaning. It was well needed. Oh, is it someone's birthday? Whose birthday is it? Gretchen? Happy birthday, Gretchen. Happy birthday to anyone else whose birthday it is. <laughs> All right, I think all the usual suspects are here and there's about 200 people, so let's get started. Okay, let's start with um, some positive news. Right, the Better Up in a Workday, the full agenda has been released and I am actually very surprised at everything that they've got going on. I thought that it was just going to be you know, a bunch of talks like we've seen with a lot of these online events lately, but they've actually got a lot of different activities going on. They've got a mindfulness um, meditation. I think they've also got yoga. They've got professors from um, top universities like Stanford. So it's going to be a very, very jam um, packed day. It is almost a full day. Um, now, because of the time difference, it may be that I don't actually uh, stay up to see um, Harry's uh, talk but I'll see how late I can um, I can stay up but I'll definitely be reporting about it um, on the next day. Harry and Serena Williams's uh, talk is last and I'm so glad to see that Serena's going to be taking part. Oh who else's birthday was it? Uh, Christina. Happy birthday Christina. Yeah, and uh, congratulations, Rihanna. But he better put a ring on it. He better put a ring on it. <laughs> I'm a millennial, but I'm very old school like that. <laughs> very old school. So he has a queen and he better treat her like a queen or else the whole of the interweb is coming after him. But yes, congratulations, Rihanna. Um, 
but yeah, that is the better up in a work day. Uh, one thing I do have to mention that I haven't seen mentioned a lot though about the summit is it is uh, limited to a hundred thousand people. Um, so you know about uh, ninety nine 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 haters <laughs> will want to sign up. <laughs> So just make sure that you are signed up. Don't um, don't leave it last minute just in case. Just in case um, it is it does reach full capacity and you don't get in because there is limited to a hundred thousand um, watchers. So yes, very much looking forward to that. And um, yeah, should should be fun. Uh, Comments, Teresa, that's why I find it so funny. The Royal Rodents claim H&M are trying to take down the Royal Family, please. They've got too much going on to worry about these people. Exactly. And, um, I mean, just what an amazing agenda that they have for this event. It is a full online event. Um, oh, Dawn, it's your anniversary. 36 years. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Congratulations to you. Uh, if you've got any advice <laughs> for us uh, young millennials who still aren't married, please drop it in the comment section. Would love to know how you keep a marriage for that long. Uh, yes, Church Nelly. <laughs> Put a ring on it. Uh, yes, we're all signed up and ready to go. Can't wait. Um... Okay, I think that's all for introductions. So let's move on to the next thing. Clever blends for those of you in the UK and Canada. They are now expanding their shipping to the UK and Canada. Um, I've already put in requests at my local organic store. If you've got local organic stores or whole food stores, um, please go put in your requests and, and um, have them inquire about um, stocking Clever Blends. Now, I do believe that there is a 20% VAT, um, but that gets removed when you spend a certain amount. There is a 20% VAT for citizens of the UK, but yes, you can now, um, you can now get your Clever Blends and I'll probably get that sometime soon as well. I can't wait to them because I've heard such good things from everyone who's tried Clever Blends that they really um, do like it and enjoy it. Okay, so that's that. I um, just want to see <laughs> if we can get all the good news um, out of the way first before we move on to the, onto the drama. And oh, for some weird reason, some of my, some of my slides haven't loaded. That's a bit strange. Let's try that again. Okay. Um, no, I think that's pretty much all of the, ah, oh, before we uh, get on to the drama, um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone um, for your comments about the World Leprosy Day. If you missed that video, um, I did put it up yesterday and um, it was just looking into uh, Diana's legacy um, with leprosy and the way she broke down stigma um, around the uh, condition and quite a number of you said that you you didn't know about this um, so this is why I love making these type of videos and I really want to make um, more of them because I think it's really important to keep Diana's legacy alive um, what she did um, alive and um, because even after all these years, the firm is still trying to um, erase her and erase her memory. So, and also um, that picture that you see with my hand with a book, I just got the uh, Diana book that she did with Andrew Mortem. So a couple of you were interested in me doing a chapter by chapter read along and breakdown. So, um, yeah, if you're, in, I, I don't know if you guys maybe want to do kind of a book club thing with it, or I can just kind of read it in my own time and then report back to you because I feel like there's so much in this book um, about Diana's uh, life um, that I don't know. So I'm really interested uh, to read it and I will do a read along. 
Uh, Church Nelly, can't believe I've been married to my hubby for 32 years. Amazing. Thank goodness for my moonshine. <laughs> this is how I get you through. Um, oh, Christina, you turned 46. Happy birthday. You are a bicentennial baby. Wow. I moved so fast. I can't believe that I'm going to be 32 this year. Yes, please, Elaine. Thank you for reminding everyone. Thumbs up. Um, okay, just no comments. Um, yes, Dana was one of a kind, just like Megan. And that's what they don't like. They feared that they would have another Diana and... No, I, I wouldn't even say that Megan is like the next Diana or a replacement for Diana in any way. I think the two women were extraordinary in their own ways, but the royal family and firm just don't like any kind of woman who is extraordinary and outshines them. Uh, Marsh, do you have to have a job to sign up for the Better Up Live podcast? No. Um, you can you can just um, um, put any details in to be honest, because part, I mean, this is, as, as much as this is an amazing event, it is partly a marketing event. So the reason they want your um, work details is because ultimately they want to market the better up service either to, um, to you if you own the company or if you work at a company, because by the end of it, you would have had such a good time that you go running to your boss and say, we should get better up. So um, you just put in any details if, if, you know, if you don't have a job or just put in your company details wherever you work at. Um, Sina, the Diana movie even got Kristen Stewart's snub for recognition. I haven't uh, seen Spencer yet. So I heard that it's very, very different from all the Diana movies, that it just circles around um, a couple of days of Diana's life. I'll, when I watch it, I'll get back to you about what I thought. But you can tell me what you thought as well. <laughs> yeah, it's not dull to outshine. Sorry, it's not difficult to outshine uh, dull people. That is true. Um, okay, so on to the next thing. We have this. I wasn't really going to cover this, to be honest, but... People kept asking me about it. So here are my thoughts and I'm going to keep it very, very short. I think that there could be a number of reasons that this situation here is happening. I actually, oh gosh, I've just, so, sorry, I've just realised that I've put a picture to Megan's. It should be, the other one should be of Kate. So sorry about that, Kate with a similar hat. Um, but I think most of you know like which picture it was, like Kate showed up to Remembrance Day with a similar looking hat. Um, that Megan was wearing. But I have three th theories about this. Um, number one, Kensington Palace are desperate for any and every type of um, news attention and clicks and to get Kate's name on the algorithm. So if that means creating a story where they know that we talk, um, they're willing to basically put Kate in a situation which is quite embarrassing um, because at the end of the day, you know, Catherine is just 40 years old and to be appearing not to have her own identity is not a good thing. But if it means getting her name out there because they know that the Sussex Squad will talk and sometimes we talk too much <laughs> about these things and I am guilty of it too, then they don't really uh, care. So you see this copying of the outfits and it's very, very blatant. I mean, I, I used to think that people were just seeing things um, but it's very, very blatant. She used to do it with Diana. And the way that Kate dresses now is nowhere near the way that she used to dress. She had that very kind of old school 1600s Mary Poppins cosplay kind of look with the coat dresses and, you know, those big weird hats. Um, but she's very much toned it down and, and become a little bit more kind of modern dressing since Meghan came along. So the first theory is that Kensington Palace um, could be just doing this to get attention. The second theory is that Kate might actually be obsessed with Megan. I don't know. It's very weird, but I don't know. Could be a theory. Maybe she sees how much attention Megan gets and she kind of wants to be like her. I don't know. Not saying that's true. It's just a theory. And the last theory um, is that 
she's trying to send some kind of message. I don't know what that message is. It could be a mixture of all of those theories. I don't know. But it's it's become so noticeable that even some news outlets have been writing about it. And it's just kind of weird. Um, I've seen uh, recently that she's kind of reverted back a little bit to her style. Um, but I do think that um, the squad needs to just leave this one alone. Me personally, what I started doing on Twitter was every time I saw a similar outfit now, I just post Megan's original outfit. Um, and I think we need to just leave this one alone. We've all had a laugh about it. Let's just not give it attention anymore. And that's all I have to say <laughs> about that. So I will go to your comments. Um, Truth for Dilly, Diana was a threat due to her popularity and charm and ability to touch others. So naturally, Megan has similar qualities. Yes. Yeah. They absolutely have similar qualities, but they were very different women. But I think the number one quality that they do share is kindness, compassion, authenticity, and the ability to connect with people. Um, yes, Angela, Harry takes directly after his mum, so Meghan and Harry complement each other. Yeah. Oh, Diana and Meghan would be thick as thieves if Diana was still alive. Um, I think they would be best friends. Uh, Levy, the royal family aren't forward thinking. H&M were such an asset. Jealousy and hate have ruined them. Now they turn on each other. <coughs> They're already turning on each other, aren't they? I'm seeing this back and forth between Clarence House and Kensington Palace. And it's, it's really going to get amped up, I think, once the Queen goes. Um, Sean, Diana's family, both sides have been in service of the royal family 500 years well Diana decided the family is meant to be a, a lot more aristocratic than the Windsors now um, hope you're doing good too Sonia hope you're having a great Monday yeah Chief Dilly it's so blatant I mean to be honest when I first heard about this I thought that people were just seeing things uh it's not just like the clothes it's even things like for example Somebody did a video, I can't remember which squaddy it was, like even the backgrounds of their living rooms, like when um, Harry and Meghan started doing uh, the online events and you could see that the background of Kate Williams' living room kind of looks similar as well. It's very strange. Teresa, yeah, <laughs> I thought I was crazy until I saw the brown turtleneck and coat pictures. She's copying Meghan's, but her followers swear it's the other way around, how juvenile, yeah. Uh, so we are such a success this is why Tina and Michelle stay away from these people and do not talk about them yeah unless it's necessary I think sometimes it is necessary so actually um the reason I found the Sausage Squad podcast Tina and Michelle was because of their infamous <laughs> Kate the Great CEO Catherine the Great episode that is that episode is going to go down as Sausage Squad um legend because it was such a great episode like Tina did not hold back nobody held back it was a brilliant episode I challenge you to go find it that was the first episode that I found I kind of remember how I found it to be honest I think it was just by chance because the first um Harry and Meghan uh channel that I found actually was was Hugo's back when he was doing it and I think that somehow led me to Tina and Michelle um Robin, she must have heard the shots fired, but she's returned to the Civil War bride. <laughs> um, yeah, the firm does not like remarkable women. It doesn't like women who can do a lot, who can hold their ground, who actually like to work. Oh, yes, this is another point, Rhonda. Yeah, what happened to the royal protocol? Because there were all of these articles about how much the Queen doesn't like uh, royal women in trousers and nobody um, should wear trousers because it's not part of protocol and now all of a sudden there's just trousers everywhere. It just tells you that so-called protocol is nonsense. 
Yeah, she'll, and it's, you know what, um, the fact that she has no self-awareness and has been handled by her mother on the firm is sad. Like, I actually want royal women to be their own people. You know, I don't uh, want anyone, even if I don't particularly like them, to just be a mannequin and a dummy for an institution that doesn't value women. I want women in royal households to be valued and to have their own uh, voices. But the institutions that they're in don't want that. And to be honest with you, I think even some of them don't want that either. I, I, I think it's naive to say that some women don't actually, um, sorry, that some women don't actually like being the submissive type. I think some of them are honestly like that, but it doesn't make it right. And it's definitely not the type of image that we should be, um, that we should be glorifying in this day and age. Uh, Libra, I bet all the royal rodents will be live streaming this. They're so predictable and said it. To think these people are supposed to have gone to university, what a waste of money and tuition time wasted on them. Are you talking about the um, the inner work event? Yeah, they'll all be watching it. They'll be watching every single part, not just Harry's part. Um, Carter, yes, Carolyn, sorry, Carol is at fault. She raised a child to prepare for show eye candy. No substance on her character. Yeah. I mean, listen, you, you can uh, go get you a rich man if, if you want a rich man. Um, get you the best man for the job, right? But you still need to have your own sense of self. Don't completely strip yourself of who you are just for the sake of getting the bag. Because there are men out there with bag who still want a woman who is her own woman you don't have to settle for somebody who just wants a dummy oh christina i remember dying of my childhood i do too um i might actually do another video on this maybe on diana's birthday or like on memorial day or something um when we're looking back at her legacy but i will actually talk about the night that me and my family went to take flowers um to Buckingham Palace because I still remember that night so clearly in my head. It's one of those like few memories that I have from that time that's very, very sharp in my mind. So I'll definitely talk about that one day. Um, yeah, Roseanne, it makes her look immature and sort of British. Um, <laughs> Crystal, why does Copy Cake keep copying Megan when she hates that? I don't understand, neither do I. I feel like this is something we're gonna um we're gonna learn about one day okay let me just try and get your comments before we move on to the next thing hello miss is it miss pirate hope you're having a great day as well Uh, Josie A. Diana was a hard act to follow. The firm wants to put Kate in the same league, hence the copying of Chloe Styles Pose's attitude. With Megan being popular, they need Kate not left out in Megan's dust. Well, the way that they actually do that is to give Catherine her own identity and space to be her own uh, person, but they're just too stuck in the past to be able to do that. You know, you, you don't... Um, you don't try and jump into somebody else's lane. You stay in your own and you build your, your endurance, your strength and your speed in your lane. Don't try and jump in somebody else's or try to be like somebody else. <clears throat> um. uh, yes, the Spence, yes, Roseanne, the Spencers are more aristocratic than the Windsors. That's why Prince Charles dated the older sisters before marrying Diana. They were desperate for that bloodline, yep. And it's so interesting that the older sisters, who were a little bit more age appropriate, did not want him. And then they just, you know, sold this poor innocent lamb to the slaughter. Oh, thank you, Carol Lund. Happy Monday to you. Uh, 
Okay, let's move on to the next thing on the agenda. And that is this. A Victoria Arbiter, who <laughs> I'm sure many of you remember from that infamous fake prank video where they tricked royal rodents into talking about the Oprah interview when they hadn't even uh, seen it. She seems to have crawled uh, back out from under her rock. And she tweeted this, uh, which I thought was um, quite funny. She said, there's been a lot of negativity surrounding the royal family of late, but that doesn't mean the end of the monarchy is nigh. Oh, what negativity are you talking about, Victoria? Are you talking about the nonce and his perversions and the fact that he apparently told palace cops, this is my house, F off, after causing a security um, scare? So is that the negativity that you're talking about, Victoria? Because I think a lot of that negativity is deserved. And she tweets this as if that negativity is not deserved. So I just thought that was really funny. But yes, Prince Andrew um, apparently abused his staff. There have been kind of numerous headlines regarding different stories of him abusing his staff. Um, and yet there has been no official statement from the palace about a bullying investigation into Andrew, but we're still waiting for the results of that so-called bullying allegation against Meghan that they put out there um, and have produced absolutely no evidence that she was a bully because there is none. Hmm. Terry H, the protocols disappeared when Meghan left, just shows they are all made up, 100%. Uh, para, didn't Diana wear trousers in her day? I think she did. But the Queen probably didn't like it. <laughs> Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream, which is in violence today. Boldy locks and cardboard coffee cat kangaroo both need to hop into oblivion. They're so unbelievably ridiculous. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to start seeing uh, more and more, I think, of who they are behind the masks when they can't hide behind the Queen. It's going to be interesting. Um, yes, Christina, Prince Charlie and Monaco has basically been held hostage since her wedding. Well, I mean, they tried to hold her hostage even before she, when she was trying to escape. Angela, the men in grey want royal women to be seen, not heard. Really women in general. Yeah, I agree. Chief Dilly, oh, this quote deserves a super chat if I could give it to you. If you marry someone for money, you always end up paying somehow. A hundred percent. hundred percent. There's nothing wrong with... Um, marrying someone who has money but they should have the character as well some people are money rich and character poor and that's the type of person that you don't want to marry my friend the queen's legacy is keeping royal women second class citizens with no independence yeah well i guess the queen herself has just always taken orders from the men in grey suits so she probably doesn't see what's wrong with it. Mm. Oh, Roseanne, you said, I took flowers to Manchester Cathedral and signed the book. Oh, was that for Diana? That's sweet. Hello, everyone. If you're joining us, this fine Monday evening. Okay, so on to the next thing. Ah, but this with the patronages. Now, as we know, Kate and William are going to the US next, sorry, this year. And I saw this article about, um, you know, bearing one, this is from the sun, so it's from a tabloid. But the reason I bring this up is because I don't know why they keep doing this Catherine because it's not going to work in her favour. The reality is that the Middleton, sorry, um, Kate and William have not been to 
the US for a very, very long time. We don't know what the mood is um, in the US when it comes to them and the rest of the, the royals, especially um, now that the Oprah interview has come and gone. Bearing in mind, that interview was three hours long. They have not released the whole interview. For all we know, Oprah could be waiting until the one year anniversary and they released the whole interview. So what else was said in that interview that we um, haven't heard? There's a number of things that could happen between now and then. Um, so they just need to stop doing this. And on actually something else that I forgot to mention when we're talking about um, Prince Andrew, I do apologise, that um, Prince Andrew has tried to make it look like he requested a trial with uh, Virginia Guff in his case, when actually it was Virginia that re requested a trial um, a long while ago. So depending on what happens with that between now and then, um, it could make the visit for the Cambridges very, very uncomfortable. I think it's already going to be uncomfortable because they haven't really addressed fully what was said in that Oprah interview. And, you know, whether or not you like Meghan, I feel like every woman knows what a woman who doesn't support other women looks like and what she acts like. And I feel like a lot of people can see that in Catherine. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when her and William go to the US, but they need to stop doing this thing, um, you know, where they put Megan in every single article to do with Kate because it's not doing her any favours. And also, <laughs> Camilla has replaced Meghan as the royal patron of the National Theatre. Um, we all know that Camilla's finest uh, work was with Charles in that telephone conversation where we found out that Charles wanted her tampon. So I wonder if they'll uh, recite that for us on a stage show. I'm interested to see what happened with the patronages that were taken from Harry and Meghan and given to and now given to Kate and Camilla and um Charles. And just notice that the independent, shady as they are, they use Camilla Parker Bowles. They don't use the Duchess of Cornwall. <laughs> so a little bit of shade there. Mm, see what you're saying in the comment section. Um See the uh, Josie. The royals were mostly German, not British. The plan was to marry more traditionally people to distance itself from Germany and the Nazi undertones. Yes, because quite a number of them were very close to Nazis. No, Diana wore shorts. Yeah, she did wear shorts. She did wear shorts. So, fake protocols. You know, the Queen wore off the shoulder dresses and slit dresses in her youth. I, I could never understand why um, during, well, I guess I do understand why. So during the wedding, um, sorry, Meghan's wedding, because she wore an off the shoulder dress, they were like, oh, she, she, she's she's docking tradition. She's, she's being rebellious. Like, no, royal women have worn off the shoulder dresses for the longest time. And if wearing an off the shoulder dress is, is rebellious, then my God, you people really are backwards. Yeah, Arbiter, Victoria Arbiter will never receive any type of award for being stupid. Still has no idea how to read the room. Silly woman. Didn't she grow up in Kensington Palace or something just because her father was um, the Queen's secretary? I, I will never uh, knock someone for having a privileged life because at the end of the day, no one chooses what type of family they're married into. But I think it's a failure on your parents' part if they don't make you appreciate the privilege that you have. And if you then grow up as an adult and you then still don't appreciate the privilege that you had, that's a failure on your part also. That's what I see in people like Victoria Arbiter. Right, Sheil, it looks like History and Karma decided to take off the earrings and the high shoes and take care of business. Yeah, we'll see how long these patronages do. Because Megan is actually an actress, so royal patron to the National Theatre was, you know, a great choice for her. Mm. 
Okay. I don't know who you're calling, sorry. <laughs> Can I re remove the picture of the sloths? Okay. I'll remove the picture of the sloths and quickly go on to the next thing. So, my apologies if you can't quite see this fully. There's two screenshots here. Um, so, you can see on one side thumbnails of YouTube videos. Now, I had tried to search for Miracle in a Cell. You can see that the autocorrect kind of did something funny and it came out with like Mirror Cell instead. But what I was searching for was Miracle in a Cell. Now, that came up, the, the trailer for the movie came up, right, as the first search um, result. The second search result that came up was this thumbnail of a video about Harry and Meghan, tears are shed. Now, this is clearly from a hater channel. I believe Royal News is a hater channel. But what I want to know is how this came up as this second video when I searched for something completely unrelated and I don't watch hater channel videos. And I haven't been recommended hater channel videos for a very long time. So it's very, very weird to me that this came up when I was searching for something completely different. This was a second video in a search result that was completely unrelated to Harry and Meghan. Now, I don't know exactly how the YouTube ad algorithm is working now, but the fact that hater channels are now coming up in unrelated searches, something is really, really going on with, with YouTube and however their algorithm works. And clearly the algorithm is pushing the hater channels because probably because they know that they get more views, you know, you can see this particular video got 1.1 1 .1, um, thousand views in 34 minutes. Now, I know because I look at the YouTube back end, sometimes the views that you see are not the actual uh, views. So on the back end, I could probably tell you that this video probably got about two, three thousand views in actuality. So it just shows you the problem, you know, that we are facing with this whole issue of YouTube, because it's not just the fact that the hater channels exist. They are being pushed by the algorithm in completely and utterly unrelated searches. And then on the other side of the um, image, you can see this is the digital, uh, or an example of digital blackface. This um, hater account um, from uh, Twitter that has a black avatar. And you can, I mean, look at the first tweet. Who The, the, uh, the tweet is talking about um, Camilla and it says, who is Camilla Parker Bowles? Are you drunk or something? Who is this bloody journalist? Honey, I know from the way that that is written that that is on a black woman. <laughs> no, no way. Um, so this is also a problem. And I just I just hope that we can eventually get to the bottom of who is not only behind the hater accounts, but also this digital blackface issue, because the fact that they're trying to use the face of people of colour to push hate um, towards Megan is 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 predictable, um, but we need to deal with it. Um, yeah, there's no PR. Their PR needs to stop because um, it's not working. Yes, Teresa, who they're trying to fool, and all of this PR is costing the British taxpayer money. <laughs> that picture of Camilla well considering the actual headline was pretty shady I'm pretty sure the person who chose the picture was shady too because <clears throat> they put they could have uh, picked from any number of pictures that's a good question Joanne what's K popular for dressing uh Mona, the Queen was worried about Kate never having a real job. Maybe that's why she keeps copying Meghan. Um, well, <laughs> I, I did hear about that and I find it quite funny because it's not like anyone in the royal family themselves has ever had a real job. And it's not like women who marry into the family are expected to work. So why was she expecting that William would get anything other than a mannequin who was raised to be an Aristo's wife? This is not an institution that ins uh, inspires, or sorry, that a woman who aspires to um, a lot would typically want to enter. I feel like in the case of Meghan, it was because of, obviously Harry is just cut from a completely different cloth. So Meghan mar married Harry. 
she didn't marry um, because she wanted what came with the institution, if that makes sense. Black Queen, poor Katie, the only ones who would pay them an ounce of attention in the US are the trumpets. They can have them. Well, I can bet you even a lot of the even a lot of the trumpets won't be paying attention to them. Because at the end of the day, like the, the trumpets still celebrate the fourth the fourth of July, right? <laughs> so a lot of them aren't necessarily interested in Kate and William either. They may dislike Meghan, but it doesn't mean that they like the other royals or the idea of royalty. Um, uh, see, a racist senator and congressman tried to shade Meghan when she says that anything remotely thought of as political, someone put it, someone put it as, um, I am a team Kate. Yeah, well, they should be focusing on their constituents and not what Megan is saying. Josephine, Kate wants to speak at the next UN Assembly. Oh gosh. If she does, then we definitely know she's copying Megan. And she's she's gonna have to work on her TED Talk skills. That'll be the day. I won't hold my breath. Um, who who's the, who's the troll in the comment section? <laughs> Feel free to delete them. Such as um, sex. I also read a while back that National Theatre wanted to keep Megan as their patron. Yeah, I believe that they do. But. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, they they loved having Megan as their patron, but they never really spoke up for her, so their loss. If they, <laughs> Catherine, if they come to the US this year, it will probably be Florida. <laughs> There's that kind of people that <laughs> will feel right at home. I have no idea what is wrong with Florida, but I hear so many Americans making fun of Florida. Can, can somebody please explain to me why other Americans um Make fun of Florida. Please explain that to me in the comment section. Thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Like, what is it about Florida? I assume Florida was very nice and sunny. Um, okay, let me, before I finish with the comments, let me just see what else I wanted to. Oh, I actually think I got through everything. So, yeah, that is pretty much all for today, my friends. I will end as usual. Uh, with your comments and then we'll call it an evening thank you so much for coming by on this wonderful Monday evening let me put a nice picture up yes smiling at each other and being happy so yeah I'll just go through your comments and we'll call it an evening um, Robins Harry and Meghan have me beyond patronage they are doing real fundraising yeah because the whole thing about royal patronage is they don't actually give money. Um, you just get the pleasure of saying that a royal is your patron. Um, but that doesn't necessarily help you. And we've seen that because two of Kate's patronage is shut down. And they never actually have enough time to um, go between all of, all of the patronages and visit the patronages. And those visits don't actually create impact. <laughs> so, you know, with Harry and Meghan, they've got the money um, to give to their charities. They've got a fan base that gives to their charities. So they're not spread thin in terms of time because those charities are actually getting money. They're actually getting a benefit. And please remember to sign up to Better Up, folks. Like I said, there's only 100,000 spaces. And haters are going to take at least half of them. So make sure you get your space. And it's actually, it's not just like some basic Zoom call. Like I've opened up the uh, the room where the um, live stream is going to be. And it's quite an advanced um, setup. Mm. 
Uh, Victoria was born in Africa. There's never mention of her mother. I think she's biracial. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Some people are white passing, but um, I didn't. Didn't know. I can't. I can't clarify anything to do with that because I don't know. Uh, Jennifer, we are present government to get rid of monarchy since Barbados did so. So I don't know why they want to come are you are you from, I'm, I'm assuming you are from jamaica there's a lot of um british families that have their claws into jamaica so i don't think that they're going to let it go so easily but i do pray for your independence um jc i was shot that the press printed experts of charles and camilla's Call Charles wanting to be a tampon. It's like Camille or Hennigas <laughs> talk about outing someone. Well, here's the thing, and I always say this about the press. At the end of the day, they will do what is best for them and their pockets. So they will toe the line uh, for the royals. But when it comes down to it, if the scandal is big enough, they will post it. And the only reason we know that they haven't spoken about a certain person's rose garden is because there was an injunction. Why does the media keep bringing up the Cambridge's move to Fort Belvedere? I have no clue. Isn't this like the fifth or sixth time they've talked about the Cambridge's moving into yet another palace? As if the grand palace they live in that the taxpayer money is paying for isn't big enough? Um... Yeah, I do think that YouTube and these platforms don't care because they're making money. Uh, Josephine, anyone who welcomes will not and cannot will be in Epstein's black book. The USA is not mediocre. Yeah, I mean, I I do also think that there's a lot of people who are going to be cautious about getting too cosy with the Cambridges um, because of obviously with this whole thing with Andrew knowing what's happened um, since the Oprah interview there's a lot of people that want to be or in the US anyway that want to be in Harry and Meghan's good graces that want to collaborate with Harry and Meghan so they're not um, they're not going to then align themselves with the Cambridges I certainly wouldn't, anyway. Uh, Rock, the main reason the Queen commands power, the men in grey suit control the narrative, an army of power controlling every need to protect them at all costs. Yeah, I think at this point, the men in grey suits have been around. I mean, these are senior secretaries of the royals. They've been around so much. They are actually more interested in maintaining their position than they actually care about the royal family. I don't think they care about the royal family. They care about themselves. They care about keeping their titles, their positions um, for their children also, who will probably go on to take on those titles and positions. Um... Uh, when you search Harry and Meghan, a long list of hater channels come up that never used to happen before. It's really bad. Wow. Oh. We will defeat this one way or another, folks. Like I said in my other video, which is why I wanted to have a discussion um, about kind of the, the the road to Harry and Meghan possibly suing, uh, suing their trolls and what we can do to... Um, also get the trolls off of these platforms and, and hold the platforms accountable. It's going to be a very, very long road. Uh, Power, are they going to the US before or after the Commonwealth tour? I didn't even know that they were um, doing a Commonwealth tour. That's interesting. <laughs> Had no idea. Thank <laughs> you. 
don't start. I love that your name is don't start and that your comment is, I don't think anyone at the UN <laughs> speaks mumble. <laughs> uh, oh, Florida is a Trump state. Trump lives there. Is that why Americans make fun of Florida? Every now and again, like I'll see a story about Florida and someone had an alligator in their backyard. That's about as much as I know about Florida. Uh, Truth Dilly, I love Florida, but yes, the Americans said, don't judge the US on Florida. <laughs> oh my God, why, why? Florida has Scientology and Disney World and a lot of cults, oh, okay, <laughs> wow. But what happened a minute? Isn't the Church of Scientology? Isn't it based in um? Isn't it based on Hollywood? Oh no! Wait, Florida is where Clearwater is, right? So yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Scientology around there. Stand corrected. <laughs> sure. Speaking at the UN, you have to be able to talk. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Florida has plenty of snakes crawling out of your toilet. Oh god. Oh that reminds me of funny story guys. So I went to uh Cambodia uh January of 2020. So this is just before like Mr. C broke out. So it was the last day that I was in Cambodia and I was at this point, don't get me wrong, I had an amazing time. I loved every second, but at this point I was so ready to go home. You know when you get like travel burnout, right? So as I'm packing my bag, a lizard like crawls out from underneath my suitcase and I'm like, nope, I'm getting out of here. Time to go home for sure. I have had enough. So that just reminded me of that. But Cambodia is amazing, by the way. Haven't visited, uh, put it on the travel list when the world opens back up fully. Um, <laughs> what you're saying? Wait, <laughs> Google... What is wrong with Florida? <laughs> it's wild there. Lots of articles. Oh gosh. Oh dear. Oh good night, um, Elaine. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> um, oh wow, you're not really going off that Florida. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, thank you to the mods who make this a safe space. Uh, please do comment if you're a regular and I've seen your name a lot and you want to be a mod, let me know. <clears throat> no problem, my darling. I always try to make it a fun life, even when we're talking about drama. Um, I do wonder um, where Kate and William will go. You know, will they go to New York? Will they go to DC? <clears throat> will they do a mixture of places? Okay. Uh, did the UK send help to Tonga? Not that I know of, um, but they should. Um, I believe. Charles did release a statement, but I don't believe they've actually sent any help, which is really sad because when they want to go and, you know, parade their colonial selves, they're very happy to do that. I mean, isn't, wasn't it Tonga or Fiji? I can't remember which one, where Kate and William were like on those chairs and they were being carried by the native people. <clears throat> Diana would have never done that. But no, I'm not aware that um, the UK has helped them at all. Um, I was read, sorry, I read an article after Brexit, some EU immigrants were asked by neighbours and co-workers when they're leaving, was that also the case for black migrants? Um, I don't know, um, I mean, I live in a very English, very conservative village and I didn't experience anything like that, so maybe you do have some ignorant people somewhere that were saying things like that. One thing that was quite funny was the day after Brexit, I think the most searched term 
was um, what does Brexit mean or what is Brexit? So, um, yeah, the, the immigration thing is, is it's always been such a hot topic um, in the UK. <clears throat> But different different groups of people have gotten uh different um sorry different groups of people have gotten the heat at different times. So I think in the seventies and eighties, um a lot of the hate was towards Jamaicans, and then during the nineties a lot of the hate was towards Eastern Europeans. And then um that when they wanted to move it to someone else, I think they moved it to Muslim people. Um and then I'm pretty like they they just they just move the hate around depending on who it is they want to target. It's, it's very disgusting. And a lot of it is uh, pushed by the British press. See what I was just saying. Um... Harry, so Reba says, Harry says his grandmother was getting bad advice. I think they are all getting bad advice because the royals are destroying themselves, yeah. They're all getting bad advice and they're all focused on their own egos. They're all, they're all greedy <clears throat> for position that they're not thinking about developing the institution as a whole. Um, Elaine, they're doing a Car Caribbean tour. <sighs> what? Where did where did this come from? Do you think it's because Barbados is leaving? So now they're trying to latch on. The problem is that the last couple of times when Barbados said that they were leaving, when Jamaica said that they were leaving, who did they send? They sent Harry. And Harry was the charming face for a very outdated and ugly institution. And they don't have that charming face anymore. I mean, to be honest, Kate, Kate and William have been working roles um, well over a decade now. They could have done numerous tours, but they haven't done that. Okay, some of you obviously don't like the Florida governor. Oh, email tips at Bots and Tanel on your community tab. Um, so that squadies will be reminded to report this header account. I reported one two days ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, sh we should keep reporting. But report also to the platforms themselves. Uh, let's see. I think I'm almost at the end of your comments. Oh, uh, yes, Valerie, they're doing a Caribbean tour because they don't want them to leave the Commonwealth. Well, it seems like they've, they've made up their minds and it's too late now. If they didn't want them to leave the Commonwealth, they should have treated these countries as equals, right? E everybody wants to do trade. What they want is fair trade. They don't want to be pillaged of their resources. Oh, Roseanne said, I want to visit the big Buddha statue in China and also Russia. Are you talking about the big Buddha statue? Um, I think I saw this and there was like, a, I mean, it's, I think like if I'm thinking about the one you're thinking about, it's really, really big. But apparently like there was a flood and it, it flooded all the way up its, um, the bottom of it. I wonder if it's okay to visit now. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to start traveling again now that um, the world is opening up a bit. Mm. Yes, do click not interested and do not recommend on any hate channel. Mm. A lot of Eastern Europeans say return after lockdown. Yeah, I um, actually have one friend who they own a local cafe and they're actually deciding to go back. Um, I mean, a lot of 
British people, and this is another thing that they're not talking about, a lot of British people are leaving the UK. So they're going to need all the immigration they can get. Because I know so many people that are leaving. <laughs> some, of your, some of your comments about, about Florida. I don't even know if I should put it on the screen. Um, okay, I think I'm almost at the point of your comments. So who's going to get the last word? Who is getting the last word? I want to... Oh, see, Matt, I want to know where they're going so I can get my poster board ready. <laughs> uh, uh, this is a very good point. How are William and Kate going to champ the people in the Commonwealth? They can't even do that in the UK. Yeah. Apparently they're going to raise national insurance again. Like, national insurance has gone up. Because um, spending was just out of control with COVID. Tax has gone up, inflation's gone up. Like people are really going to struggle. <clears throat> uh, cookies and cream. The unroyal family can do all the tours they like. Fact remains, the unroyal family are racist. They've never supported anything for people of color. <clears throat> yeah. Nothing that doesn't benefit them. Thank you so much, Phoebe. You take care as well. Um, uh, are you talking about my lizard story? <laughs> uh, when they try, when they try to get into your clothes, that's definitely a sign to head home. I think it was trying to get my suitcase, you know. I was like, nope, now it's time to head home. Oh, another thing that you'll see quite often in um, Indonesia and Thailand are monitor lizards. They are massive. And I saw this one monitor lizard in Thailand that was like crawling on the shelves <laughs> of the shops. Uh, those are the type of like oddities that I love seeing when I'm traveling because I will never see a giant three meter lizard crawling around the shops or like a monk reading his iPad on a bus. I love seeing stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, okay, Crystal, I'm gonna give you the last word have a blessed and peaceful evening, squaddies. Stay safe. Yes, stay safe, everyone. I'm going to play us out. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, I might do a live tomorrow, but it will be probably a very short one. Like maybe like a half hour one. Um, yes, have a blessed evening, everyone, and I'll play us out.